Set up before David in order to pick him up at the South Lake Trailhead by 2 p.m. When passing Tuolumne Meadows, I saw a through hiker that needed a ride to resupply, so I picked him up. At first, he just wanted a ride to Levining at the bottom of Tioga Pass, but when he mentioned his actual destination was Mammoth, I agreed to drop him there. The road up to South Lake was good, so I got there early enough to walk Lexi a little before David arrived. No zero this time, so we had to jump right on the town chores quickly. We got a room at the Travel Lodge in Bishop. After Dave showered and changed into his town clothes, we started to do the laundry. This was tough because the little laundry room at the hotel had a line. We watched something on the hotel internet while Dave set up his new phone. A proper phone replacement arrived at home while he was hiking the last section. Dave walked down the street to get us some dinner while I walked with Lexi and took Dave's clothes to an official laundromat. We were never going to be able to finish his laundry at the hotel. Although we had a pretty early morning, we didn't get to the North Lake trailhead until 9 a.m. The road to North Lake wasn't as good. I took a picture of Dave at the trailhead and he was off. He'd have to walk 17 miles over Paiute Pass before rejoining the PCT at mile 857. I passed through Lee Vining on the way home. There was a couple who needed a ride back to Twelling Meadows, so I helped them out. I took a break in Yosemite after that and grabbed this selfie. Dave was crossing Paiute Pass at the same time. Then he followed Paiute Creek to reach the official trail just three miles north of the bridge outage that forced all the through hikers off the trail. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back on the PCT track. It was less than two miles from there to where he branched off the PCT to Muir Trail Ranch. All reports from past years said Muir Trail Ranch was a must-see. When Dave came to this sign, he followed the Muir Trail Ranch arrow and not the backpacker resupply and store sign. Oops. When he got to the ranch, he met a lovely woman tending the horses. She told him he could come onto the ranch property as a shortcut to the store. When he reached the store, everything changed. The two guys manning the store were pissed. They probably wanted to leave early. It was 4.47 p.m. They were angry that he came in from the wrong direction. They said, quote, there's nothing in the store for you, unquote. Far Out Comments said they were doubling their listed cabin rental prices to two fifty eight per night. Dave found it hard to believe, and he thought he'd ask about them. That was when they told him they were actually $500 a night. They wanted Dave to leave and were willing to say anything to get rid of him. So he did just that. But first he cooked dinner and ate it so he could drop the weight of a meal and its trash before moving on. At least he could use their trash can. Dave was carrying enough food to get him to Tuolumne Meadows, but he was toying with the idea of going all the way to Sonora Pass. Resupplying from Tuolumne would be difficult because all the facilities there were closed due to damage from the heavy snowfall. He'd have to catch a bus, if it was even running, to get to Levining or hitch the 31 miles. Doing that, resupplying, and getting back on the trail in one day would be tricky. That's why a couple of meals at the ranch, which were supposed to have come with a cabin, would have been nice. Any food you don't have to carry on your back is a plus. After dinner, he hiked back to the PCT and found a stealth spot to sleep at. He'd only check off four official PCT miles this day. The next day, he woke up with a mission. He was just 20 and a half miles from the dock at Lake Edison. A ferry would be taking people to Vermilion Valley Resort at 4.45 p.m. If he could maintain a two and a third mile per hour speed, he could eat two town meals and sleep in a real bed. VVR had a store, and Dave could theoretically resupply there, too. His pack would be heavy, but he could load up with enough food to get him to Sonora Pass and the end of his PCT through hike. The morning would be spent climbing to the top of Selden Pass, the prettiest high pass in the Sierra so far, probably because it was the lowest at just under 11,000 feet. Dave then hustled down into the valley, taking no breaks and few pictures. Before long, it was nearly four. He'd crossed the 13 miles to the Mono Creek Bridge. Just past the bridge, a mile-long side trail takes you to the VVR ferry dock. While he was hiking, I was attempting and eventually able to contact VVR to ensure the ferry arrived. VVR only sends out a ferry if they get a request from a hiker or a resort guest. The ferry saves you five miles each way but costs $20 each time. When you arrive on the beach at the other side of the lake, the resort gives you a complimentary drink and briefs you on how it all works. They started a tab for Dave, which in the end would include his two ferry rides, a tent cabin, two meals, and his resupply needs to get him to Sonora Pass. It was well over $200, but if you ask him, he'd tell you it was worth it. This was his last real taste of civilization before he crossed the last 140 miles of the Sierras. After a very satisfying pizza dinner, he sat around a fire and enjoyed a beer.
The lady who briefed him on the beach joined him for a while. She told him that Sunday would be their last day, full operation for the season. He felt very fortunate to have enjoyed this iconic respite. Trail stop checklist. Mere Trail Ranch, check. Vermilion Valley Resort, check. Shortest section ever, just 23 miles.